Hello guys, recently OpenAI released the Max version of their GPT 5.1 Codex. And I got a request in the comments on YouTube to have a detailed comparison between Codex Max and Opus 4.5. And I decided to do exactly that, especially since it is free to try in cursor until December 11th. And by the way, the most popular answer to that is yes, the naming of the models is so confusing. So recently, I remember GPT-5 came to kind of fix the issues with all those GPT-4 version models with confusing name. And now it seems like they're doing it again. But for my test, I decided to choose GPT-5.1 Codex Max, this model against Opus 4.5 for the same task and also Sonnet 4.5. And I deliberately chose a longer test that would run five to 10 minutes. And in this video, I will show you the results. So first, the task, the prompt. The prompt is actually this. This is a Laravel project and I asked AI to create a CRUD for car model already existing. So this is the database table and I wanted a CRUD for that. Seems easy, right? But there's a twist. For that CRUD, I asked to apply the theme, the UI theme called Tail Admin, which was pre-used in this product. So I asked to mimic the theme and work on the styling of tables and forms. And I thought to test whether all those models would apply the blade components and the styling correctly. So the task was in the prompt, not only to generate Laravel CRUD, but also for front end components, there was a separate subfolder. So in this project, there was tail admin Laravel, which was kind of like a separate Laravel mini project with example of components, pages, and other stuff coming from the original GitHub of the original tail admin theme from the author, which is open source, by the way. But basically the challenge to the LLM was to analyze this folder and apply correct CSS and blade components. So did all three models do successfully? Let's see. Also, I will tell how fast they did the job. And at the end of this video, we'll talk about pricing comparison. So if you compare the visual result, actually all three models did a pretty good job. So this is the result of Sonnet 4.5, the table and the form. This is the result by Opus, the table and the form. Slight differences in components and breadcrumbs and headers, but roughly similar and successfully working. And then Codex, also did a good job. You see the differences in the headers here, but form is working. So they all completed the job successfully. But as they say, the devil is in the details. First, I will talk about Sonnet 4.5. It did the job in roughly seven minutes, but the problem with Sonnet and why I don't recommend Sonnet for such longer tasks, I noticed that Sonnet starts to run off the rails, so to speak, for longer prompts at the end of those prompts. So it generated files pretty successfully and relatively quickly but then when it started to generate the automated test for that and the test failed for the first time, then it ran in circles for a minute or two to fix those tests, which it did successfully, but still took longer time for that. And also the worst part, this is the end of the prompt result, ran the test again, now it passed, yay, successfully, then tried to run Laravel Pine for code styling and then for some reason decided to migrate fresh seed which wiped my local database. And I know that LLMs tend to do that sometimes randomly without any reason, which is fine for me because I'm doing that on demo projects and I have data seeders to recover the data quickly or reseed something. That's why I'm running that in cursor without any manual permissions. It's all automatic, but keep in mind that LLMs can do that. And in this case, it was specifically Sonnet model. Opus and Codex didn't do migrate fresh seed. So those are two reasons why I would not recommend Sonnet for longer tasks. Next, Opus 4.5 features how it is different and we'll get to Codex in a minute. So what Opus did, what other models didn't do is it ran Playwright browser testing, opening the browser automatically for me to test if the page actually works. So it did all the job in five minutes and 20 seconds compared to Sonnet, which was longer with seven minutes. So Opus was faster and it spent roughly the last minute on this. All tests pass. Now let's navigate to the browser. And what happened? I'd made a screenshot. Yes, this is what happened. So I was running cursor in the background and then it opened Chrome itself and started navigating along the page 
filling in the forms, signing in with existing testing user, which it took from querying the database and basically doing browser testing for me. And from what I've noticed while working with Opus 4.5, it does it pretty often for longer tasks. So for example, navigate it to edit, fill in the form and then perform two browser actions and even made a screenshot for me. So in the git changes, you may see PNG file, which looks like this. Pretty impressive if you ask me, but I'm not sure how much it adds to the final price of that prompt and we'll get to the price at the end of this video. So if that adds a lot of price, I would maybe want to disable that feature for some cases. But the main difference between Sonnet and Opus, Sonnet starts running in circles with tests and retesting and fixing stuff. Opus, from my experience, is much more stable for long running tasks, keeping the context for longer, automated test passing from the first time usually, and also such browser testing makes it double quality, double insurance. Now let's get to Codex. With Codex, the interesting thing, I was following along how models do the thing. So to do became a really fast result for Codex. So it was done in like five seconds or so. Then before making the change, it explored seven directories and 19 files. And this took quite a long time, longer than other models. So Cloud Sonnet and Opus went through exploration phase in roughly 30 seconds. For Codex, it was one and a half minutes. But then when Codex started actually generating the code, it was much faster than other two. So at the end, the result in terms of speed was faster. The overall delivery was in four and a half minutes. Remind you, Opus was five and a half minutes and Sonnet was seven minutes. And Codex didn't run off the rails. It went through everything successfully. Tests passed from the first time bind and everything was smooth and this is the result. The only downside was that the amount of automated tests was much lower. And this may be the reason why the speed was faster. So Codex generated just four tests. So these are the methods, creates, updates and deletes. If we compare that, for example, with Opus, Opus created 14 tests with many more granular methods, checking more validation stuff and authentication and other details. And now the main question I wanted to test, did the models apply the components from tail admin theme successfully? So I was expecting the models to reuse the components from resources views components in the original tail admin. And let's see, this is an example of blade file in Sonnet version. And as you can see, there's one component for breadcrumbs, but then it's just div with styling of tailwind without using components from tail admin. This is Opus result. So we have the same breadcrumb successfully and it used UI alert component, which we can find, for example, in the components UI alert blade. So it successfully identified the component from huge amount of components and the folder and successfully reused it in the table. And this is the same page in Codex, also successfully breadcrumb and UI alert, but also on top of that, there's component card, which was exactly the visual difference that you saw in the very beginning of this video. So this thing, only Codex added that on top. I'm not sure if it was needed, I didn't specify that, but it was example of reusing the components from tail admin, which was exactly the goal of this prompt. So on that page, Codex went deeper. And if we take a look at another page of the form, how many components were reused in the form. So in case of Sonnet, it did use breadcrumb, now it did use component card, but inside we have plain tailwind with input styling without using the components from tail admin, again. So Sonnet under delivered here. Here's the Opus version of the same page, breadcrumbs, no component card, but inside we have forms input, exactly what I wanted and expected here. Those blade components were created for consistent styling over all the pages and this was one of the goals. So better result from Opus. And this is the result by Codex, the same create file, breadcrumbs, component card, and inside we have include of the form. So it decided to refactor the forms of create and edit into one partial include. And if we go inside, inside we do have those forms input from 
tail admin. So in this case, Codex went the deepest with reusability using the components and even formatting it like this instead of just in one line. And I have compared the code deeper and I will shoot a separate video on that for Laravel developers on my Laravel daily channel. So subscribe to that, do not miss any video because it's not that much about AI, it's more about Laravel structure. But even in Codex case, it missed some of the details. So for example, in the table, there's for else loop for the data or for each, and it didn't implement the empty stage. So if there's no record in the database, it would be just empty table. In case of Opus, for example, it did for else and then empty state should be somewhere here down below this one. Empty with link to add your first record. So all in all, I could find small details to improve in all of those models. To be honest, I don't see a clear winner here. I see a clear kind of loser sonnet, but I told you that already I would not use sonnet for such long running tasks. And even looking at components, it didn't use the components of tail admin as I was expecting. So yeah, Sonnet is for smaller tasks, but between Opus and Codex, I don't see a clear winner. Codex is pretty much on par with Opus 4.5 for this particular experiment. Finally, let's take a look at pricing. So these three lines on top of my cursor dashboard, and by the way, this is why I use cursor and not Cloud Code or Codex CLI. Only cursor dashboard shows the prices in this way comparable. So Sonnet was a dollar and a half, Opus was almost three dollars but again i'm not sure how much of that was browser testing with playwright i need to test it separately and then codex max although they say it's free until december 11th in cursor for some reason it charged 56 cents didn't charge directly but deducted it from my 20 dollars plan but then this is a question if it's a real price of codex max compared to opus then it's like five times cheaper for roughly same result in my experience. If we take a look at model pricing on Cursor, on their page they probably didn't update it, but Opus is the same price as Sonnet until December 5. I'm shooting this video on December 7th, so Opus should be more expensive. I'm not sure if it's even calculated, but anyway, the price is $3 and $15 respectively for input and output, and Codex Max is $125 and $10. So my assumption is that it may be real price of Codex Max, and if it is, then that new model becomes a clear winner of this test. And the final kind of conclusion in this video, it seems like we have a new generation, new family of models, even better at generating code for long running tasks, which is Gemini 3 Pro, Opus 4.5, and now we have GPT-5.1 Codex Max. They are all very good, no matter which one you use. And then it depends on your prompting, on your context, and which CLI do you use. You probably shouldn't use cursor for cloud code. You should use cloud models. Codex you should use in Codex CLI probably. For Gemini 3, it would be probably anti-gravity, and it would probably give you even better results. What do you guys think about this experiment, or in general, new models? We can discuss, as always, in the comments below. And if you want to follow more of my AI coding experiments, not only on this YouTube channel, every Wednesday I remind you I send a free newsletter with links to my YouTube videos, but also links to the community news with my own comments and other experiments. The link to that newsletter will be in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.